All right, so today we are going to go deeper into the alphabet of lines, or what sometimes re also referred to as the ABC of lines. And uh, I'm going to go into all the different types of line types and line conventions that you will run across in traditional blueprint reading. We have to know how to uh, interpret these lines and what they mean and how to actually draw them when we are drafting our, our sketching. So they communicate with us and they let uh, engineers, draftspeople, machinists, workers know specific things about uh, the prints. Um, and a lot, of, again, as I had said before, there is a lot of symbols and a lot of symbolism in this that you have to learn. So uh, blueprint reading by itself is a completely, totally different language. It's a universal language, and you have to learn uh, that language just like you would any other foreign languages here as well. So and we're going to start off with going through more of these line conventions. So uh, as we go, um, you know, you will notice if you already have, you should because we've talked about it that there are varying different styles and thicknesses. Uh, we've gone over border lines and uh, title blocks, and object lines, hidden lines, and center lines. So you're gonna get a few more than that today. So um, again, with the construction line, you can see right here, this is a light, very light, faint construction line. It goes across and you can hardly see that. Those are there uh, as guides to help you when you're drawing. Um, they help you create and generate either other lines or the shapes to box it in. Like in this case, I imagine whoever uh, the drafts person was that was doing this may have been using these lines to kind of get a rough idea of how to generate that arc um, around there when they're drawing. And you can use those to kind of construct those other types of lines or arcs or circles, radiuses, and other types of features. Your object lines will always be thick and dark. They, of course, do define the actual object that we are drawing. Hidden lines. So hidden lines are the interior details there. So now this is a cutaway section. So when you see some section lines, we'll go over those shortly here. Um, and if we were able to slice this in half, you would see the solid object lines but because in reality we don't slice that in half uh, that's where you need those actual object lines let me uh, move my uh, webcam up here so uh, that's where you need these actual object lines or center lines so here's your center lines they of course are used to define the center of arcs any circles symmetry on a part uh, they're about half as thick as the object lines. They follow with a uh, short dash, a space long dash, short dash. Um, remember that short dash, space long dash, space short dash as you go through. Your section lines. Basically, they're used to indicate where uh, inside material. So uh, this is a cutout line here, and that where this part of the uh, whatever this part is has been removed away and the material has been removed so you can see down in the middle of that and that is shown on a print by using these section lines so that's your short break line uh, usually it's freehand drawn uh, it can be squiggles like this uh, sometimes it might even be a little bit more uniform um, it's never like an arc would be there is some type of a broken jagged zigzag type uh, feature on that to indicate that it is a short break line there as well your dimension lines and this is the start where we're getting into because when we start to dimension we will have uh, of course this 12 inch here and that one and a quarter inch right there is the actual dimension and that dimension is shown by these dimension lines. Dimension lines have arrows on both ends and those go to indicate what the dimension of a part or feature is. So here you've got this one and a quarter inch and that dimension indicated by these dimension lines goes from this point over to that point. Uh, these are called extension lines. Those are probably going to be the next line that comes up. So that's one and a quarter inches to what 
I'd say that's the shoulder. And of course, the overall length of this is 12 inches. And as I said, these are your extension lines. Now, it is important as you do this to know your extension lines will never and should never touch the object. They should always be away from it. Um, one of the nice things here, as you guys sketch these, just make sure that they're about a sixteenth of an inch away from the part so that you don't have any confusion. They shouldn't really cross over uh, anything as well. So, uh, And they will always kind of extend out past the arrowhead of the actual dimension line. So, so again, you've got the dimension, your dimension line, and your extension line, all that goes into uh, dimensioning a part when you're drawing that. Your long brake line, anytime we have long shafts especially or our longer parts where we wouldn't necessarily be able to fit all of that onto a um, piece of paper, uh, we can shorten what we need to actually draw or draft by using these long brake lines. Now the difference here um, between a long brake line and a short brake line. The short brake line would be kind of uh, up here, maybe to cut out a section area or some type of a, um, smaller area that you wanna see. The long brake line is really predominantly used for long, long parts where you don't have to draw out the whole uh, feature. So we certainly wouldn't wanna draw this out at a one-to-one -one scale for a full 12 inches. Uh, it would just kind of be a waste of paper space because we know exactly what that's going to mean um, by having these long break lines. And notice it is always uh, in combination with each other. You wouldn't just put one there. You would actually physically show the break with two lines going into that. Your leader line. This is also another uh, type of dimensioning so where you have a leader. Basically, it's just a pointer. So it's got an arrowhead on it as well. And then it comes out and has some type of a dimension or call out or other type of feature, um, some type of detail that's on there. Those are your leader lines. So these uh, standards, of course, are related to technical drawings. Uh, if we are using CAD, usually your CAD software has those put in and it's very, very precise as opposed to freehand. Um, however, when you're freehand, you still need to know and follow these standards um, and use them as a guide when you're sketching. So they help to clarify uh, your design ideas and the intent behind the actual drawing feature, and they help to avoid confusion between anybody else who has to look at your drawing and try to read and interpret your print. So, um, so you do want to make sure that you are using all of these line conventions. Now, there is what they call precedence of lines that we need to go over. Uh, so this is when any type of line might overlap, which line is going to be actually shown and which one should you be drawn. So um, of course, the more complex we get with different types of prints, uh, they re are going to require this and you'll get more familiar with it as you go. So the rules are, and this you want to try to commit to memory, um, so object lines usually are going to take precedence over just about any other line type. There is one exception, but um, the object lines are going to take precedence over hidden and center lines. Your hidden lines will take precedence over center lines. And then, of course, the cutting plane line, if you do have a cutting plane, we'll talk more about those as we go, uh, that will take precedence over all of your other line types as well. But for the most part, uh, in this class, you're going to be using the object lines, hidden lines, and center lines, and you need to know that that hierarchy there, that precedence is object lines, then uh, hidden lines, and then center lines. So here's an example, and you'll see here as we go, uh, there would be a hidden line here, but as we transfer all of this and project up, we also, this tangency point of this circle right here uh, is in line, oops, went back too far, let me go back one more slide, uh, is in line with this edge of that slot. So, so your object line here is going to take precedence over the hidden line that would be created by this feature. 
And the same thing going this way. We have a center line here for the center of that hole, but we also have this shelf, so to say, or shoulder here uh, that would become an object line when it's turned this way. And of course, that object line is going to take precedence over that center line. But now we do know if all we had to view was this right side view, we would know that something else is going on there because your object line would not extend out past uh, those edges. So the fact that you've got this little uh, tail, so to say, on this line tail on both of these sides lets you know that there's something else going on uh, there with that particular uh, print or drawing. And we know, of course, that that's the center line. Um, and that's what that is being drawn now. You can't really zoom in on this one. Uh, if I were to actually draw this, uh, there should be a little space or gap here uh, to kind of be indicating that as well, um, just so that you would be able to see that. So, so that is our uh, alphabet of lines and the precedence there. So go ahead, you have some work to attach and kind of identify those lines as you go. So use this PowerPoint. There's some other handouts that are in there for you to use as well so that you can identify and then get to know all of these different types of lines. Have a great day.